What's up guys? On this week's episode of Donnie Graham Builds, we're gonna be making this awesome custom modern dresser. Let's get to work. All right, so first things first, let's pick up some materials. Ugh, not a lot of great stuff. Let me get that out of the way, grab one of these. Ooh, probably pick up one of these as well. And now that we're back at the shop, we can start getting things rough cut to size using the track saw. With everything cut roughly oversized on the track saw, we went ahead and took it over to the table saw to bring everything to the exact final length and width. Now the carcass of this is made out of poplar veneered plywood, um, but I don't want those plywood edges showing, so I'm going to attach some hardwood edge banding. Uh, this stuff's going to be a lot more durable than the typical iron-on edge banding that you can find at your big box stores. That stuff works okay. I just don't personally like it that much. Um, usually you'll need special clamps for this, but I found out that just using blue painter's tape works really well to lock those pieces down. And while hardwood edge banding is a lot more durable, the drawback is it requires a lot more sanding to get everything smoothed out. So let's go ahead and get this ball rolling. Oh, and the poplar veneer is really, really thin, so be super careful not to go through it. I did burn through it a little bit, but thankfully poplar's got so much variation that you couldn't really tell. And just like that, we've got our top, our bottom, the left wall, and an interruption from the cutest little girl you've ever seen. Holy cow, that little bow. Our other wall and a vertical partition. So let's talk joinery. Uh, we're gonna use rabbits and dados to bring this together. Now I'm gonna make those using my dado stack, which is a series of blades you can install on your table saw to take wider passes at a time. If you don't have a dado stack, you can also use a router to do this, or you can use a regular table saw blade and just take multiple passes. This may not make sense yet, but let's get into it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. So we'll install these blades and run a couple test cuts on some scrap plywood. Looks like things are coming together well, so we're good to go forward. I get the height set and I start cutting my rabbits. And once all our joinery is cut, we move over to the workbench to start assembly. Holy cow, who's the last person to use this glue brush? Um, we use every right clamp we have and get this thing pulled together. And it was actually right about here that I realized that I had made a mistake earlier. I have gotten so used to just sanding and breaking edges when I'm sanding that I did not account for the idea that this would be rabbit joinery. So there were small gaps along all four rabbits, which was kind of a bummer, but ultimately not a huge deal. This is a piece that I'm keeping, not for a client, so I wasn't too worried about it. Good learning curve. Once we got everything out of clamps, we went ahead and took it outside so it could soak up some rays. Uh, this poplar was working on its tan. Uh, but in all serious, for those who don't know, poplar will actually darken and turn more brown the more you leave it in sunlight. So I like a nice rich color, so we left it out for a few hours. And now with our vertical partition cut to size using a referential measurement, we can get some glue in those dados and get that piece locked in place using just a little bit of gentle persuasion. Now, here's a part that I was really excited about. I managed to find these beautiful poplar boards at a local lumber yard, spent a good 10 to 15 minutes picking through boards to find ones with a lot of color and grain variation. Uh, we're going to glue this up for our front face panels using dominoes uh, just to help with alignment. 
Uh, we are going to end up cutting through the dominoes when we cut for our drawer faces, but it's at the top of the drawer and no one ever really sees that, so it's not a huge deal. And with the drawer faces uh, getting glued up, we can turn our attention to the actual drawer boxes. I'm making my boxes out of half inch Baltic birch plywood, uh, pretty inexpensive material, really durable and pretty easy to work with. I make all my boxes really simple. I cut them to size and I just use a little bit of glue and brad nails and a quarter inch groove to set the bottom panel in. Nothing fancy here, but it gets the job done. And once the panel was all glued up, I could get it out of clamps and over to the bench. And what are we doing here? What? Sanding again? I've sanded so many times. One second. Ah, that's much better. All right. So let's get working on these drawer slides. These are ball bearing drawer slides. They are not soft clothes, but they work pretty well. Now, what I like to do for drawer slides is actually sit my drawer on about a half inch sheet of plywood, set the actual slides in place just to make sure that all my math came out correctly and the drawer will fit. Um, I take the male part of the drawer slide out and set the female part on the inside component and start to attach it with screws. And then I will slide the male component back into the female component, put the drawer in place, slowly pull it out and add screws as I go. This method has worked out really, really well for me and I usually don't have too difficult of a time putting drawer slides in. Now, I'm not sure how this happened, but somewhere along the way, our panel got a little out of square. So we ended up having to make a couple custom cuts on the track saw, which thank goodness for the track saw because otherwise we would have been a real pickle without it. Uh, but once we got our drawer faces cut, we could go ahead and start laying out our marks for our drawer handles. Now this is actually a fairly straightforward process. All I do is find the middle of the height of the drawer and the middle of the length of the drawer. Mark the middle of the handle itself and then line up those two points. Tilt the handle so I can see the holes that meet up and pre-drill our holes. Now these pre-drill holes are gonna come in really handy here attaching the drawer face to the actual drawer box because we have those holes and we can just drive screws right through and attach it to the drawer box, pull the drawer out, put some screws in the back. Then once everything's secure, we can back out of those front screws and actually attach the handle. Now, the left side of this dresser is pretty straightforward, just drawer boxes and drawer faces. The right side, however, uh, I wanted to have a laundry hamper slide out. Now, this meant that I needed a place to attach drawer slides to and that I needed a place to attach the face frame. So I made a quick little L bracket out of some scrap plywood using wood glue and pocket hole screws. I attached the drawer slide to the bottom of the cabinet this time and then attached the L bracket to those drawer slides. This worked out pretty well. This thing's actually starting to come together. I'm really, really excited with how it's looking. I love the continuous grain across and how that carries over. I'm excited about the laundry hamper and just the overall functionality, keeping that just clean and out of the way. I think it's gonna be awesome. It's still missing something though. Oh yeah, feet. <laughs> Let's get started on those. So I wanted to keep the base fairly simple. I just glued up a couple scrap pieces of six quarter poplar set those in clamps and while those were gluing up I could start working on the aprons. And like I said nothing too fancy here I just got the two aprons cut to size got the legs cut to two inches by two inches 
added a taper, and then just slapped everything together with some glue and dominoes, and it came out pretty well. While this isn't too complicated, I do want to throw out a word of caution. I'm actually new to the domino. I've only had mine for about six months. When you plunge the mortises, do that before you add the taper. If you do it after the taper, then your plate doesn't have a lot of surface area to reference against, and it gets a little dicey. Now, once the base is in place, I was really liking the look, but I wanted to have a bit of visual separation between the base and the cabinet. So kind of on a whim, I just grabbed my trim router and a chamfer bit and really ran over everything. And I took a good look at it. I thought it was pretty nice. So I just went crazy and just routed every edge that I could get to. And I think it turned out really, really nice. Now, when it comes to attaching the base of the cabinet, I normally like to use figure eight screws, but I didn't have any on hand. So a good backup here was to mortise out um, some holes using a Forstner bit and then use some pocket hole screws with a washer. That way it was oversized and it had room for a seasonal wood bullet. Now for finish, I'm using General Finishes Armor Seal in a satin. This is an oil-based finish. Uh, it goes on really, really well. It is water resistant, uh, doesn't leave rings or anything like that. And it really helps this poplar just pop and sing. Would you look at that wood grain? That is pretty stuff. And I applied two coats of this, wiping off the excess after each coat with a light sanding. The last thing we really had to do for this one is to brand it in the bottom left corner and we're ready for that fancy b-roll. Thank you so much for following along. If you enjoyed the content, like, comment, and subscribe. Share it with your friends. Give them the encouragement to go out and tackle their own projects. No one taught me how to do this. I didn't take shop class in high school or college or trade school or anything like that. I just kind of enjoyed it and got after it, and you can do the same. This piece is going to be a part of a series where I'm building a lot of custom, popular, modern furniture. I've already tackled the bed frame and the TV stand. I did do those before YouTube, so if you want to check those builds out, go over to my Instagram page. And then follow me there because I put up updates on the daily letting you guys know what I'm tapping in the shop on a day-to-day -day basis. That's going to do it, guys. Again, thanks so much, and we'll see you in the next one.